Welcome to the reading of the Essene Gospel of Peace by Edmund Bordeaux Zip Kelly. Nearly 2,000 years have passed since the Son of Man taught the way, the truth, and the life of mankind. He brought help to the sick, wisdom to the ignorant, and happiness to those in misery. He conquered half of humanity and the whole of civilization of the West. This fact proves the eternal vitality of the Master's words and their supreme and comparable value. The content of this book represents only about a third of the complete manuscripts which exist in the Aramaic in the secret archives of the Vatican and in old Slavonic and the royal archives of the Habsburgs. Now, the property of the Austrian government. We owe the existence of these two versions to the Nestorian priest who, under pressure of the advancing hordes of Genghis Khan, were forced to flee from the east towards the west, bearing all their ancient scriptures and icons with them. The ancient Aramaic texts date from the third century after Christ while the old Slavonic version is a literal translation of the former. Exactly how the text traveled from Palestine to the interior of Asia into the hands of the Nestorian priest, archaeologists are not yet able to reconstruct for us. We have nothing to add to this text. It speaks for itself. The reader, who studies the pages that follow with concentration, will feel the eternal vitality and powerful evidence of these profound truths which mankind needs today more urgently than ever before. And the truth shall bear witness of itself. London, 1937. Edmund Bordeaux, Zech Kelly. The Essene Gospel of Peace. And then, many sick and maimed came to Jesus, asking him, If you know all these things, tell us, why do we suffer with these grievous plagues? Why are we not whole like other men? Master, heal us, that we too may be made strong and need abide no longer in our misery. We know that you have it in your power to heal all manner of disease, free us from Satan and from all his great afflictions. Master, have compassion on us. And Jesus answered, Happy are you that you hunger for the truth, for I will satisfy you with the bread of wisdom. Happy are you that you knock, for I will open to you the door of life. Happy are you that you would cast off the power of Satan, for I will lead you into the kingdom of our mother's angels, where the power of Satan cannot enter. And they asked him in amazement, Who is our mother, and which her angels, and where? is her kingdom. Your mother is in you, and you in her. She bore you, she gives you life. It was she who gave to you your body, and to her shall you one day give it back again. Happy are you when you come to know her and her kingdom. If you receive your mother's angels, and if you do her laws, I tell you truly, he who does these things shall never see disease. For the power of our mother is above all, and it destroys Satan and his kingdom, and has rule over all your bodies and all living things. The blood which runs in us is born of the blood of our earthly mother. 
her blood falls from the clouds, leaps up from the womb of the earth, babbles in the brooks of the mountains, flows wide in the rivers of the plains, sleeps in the lakes, rages mightily in tempestuous seas. The air which we breathe is born of the breath of our earthly mother, her breath is azure in the heights of the heavens, sows in the tops of the mountains, whispers in the leaves of the forest, billows over the cornfields, slumbers in the deep valleys, burns hot in the desert. The hardness of our bones is born of the bones of our earthly mother, of the rocks and of the stones. They stand naked to the heavens on the tops of mountains, are as giants that lie sleeping on the sides of the mountains, as idols set in the desert, and are hidden in the deepness of the earth. The tenderness of our flesh is born of the flesh of our earthly mother, whose flesh waxes yellow and red in the fruits of the trees, and nurtures us in the furrows of the fields. Our bowels are born of the bowels of our earthly mother and are hid from our eyes like the invisible depths of the earth. The light of our eyes, the hearing of our ears, both are born of the colors and the sounds of our earthly mother which enclose us about as the waves of the sea, a fish, as the eddying air, a bird, I tell you in very truth, man is the son of the earthly mother, and from her did the son of man receive his whole body, even as the body of the newborn baby is born of the womb of his mother. I tell you truly, you are one with the earthly mother. She is in you, and you in her. Of her were you born, in her do you live, and to her shall you return again. Keep therefore her laws, for none can live long, neither be happy, but he who honors his earthly mother and does her laws. For your breath is her breath, your blood her blood, your bone her bone, your flesh her flesh, your bowels her bowels, your eyes and your ears are her eyes and her ears. I tell you truly, should you fail to keep but one only of these laws, should you harm but one only of all your body's members, you shall be utterly lost in your grievous sickness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I tell you, unless you follow the laws of your mother, you can in no wise escape death. And he who clings to the laws of his mother, to him shall his mother cling also. She shall heal all his plagues, and he shall never become sick. She gives him long life and protects him from all afflictions, from fire, from water, from the bite of venomous serpents. For your mother bore you, keeps life within you. She has given you her body, and none but she heals you. Happy is he who loves his mother and lies quietly in her bosom, for your mother loves you, even when you turn away from her. And how much more shall she love you if you turn to her again? I tell you truly, very great is her love, greater than the greatest of mountains, deeper than the deepest seas. She never deserts them. She never deserts them. She never deserts them. As the hen protects her chickens, as the lioness her cubs, as the mother her newborn baby, so does the earthly mother protect the Son of Man from all danger and from all evils. For I tell you truly, 
evils and dangers innumerable lie in wait for the sons of men. Beelzebub, the prince of all devils, the source of every evil, lies in wait in the body of all the sons of men. He is death, the lord of every plague, and taken upon him a pleasant raiment, he tempts and entices the sons of men. Riches does he promise, and power, and splendid palaces, and garments of gold and silver, and a multitude of servants. All these he promises renown and glory, fornication and lustfulness, gluttony and wine bibbing, riotous living and slothfulness in idle days. And he entices everyone by that to which their heart is most inclined. And in the day that the sons of men have already become the slaves of all these vanities and abominations, then in payment thereof he snatches from the sons of men all those things which the earthly mother gave them so abundantly. He takes from them their blood, their blood, their bone, their flesh, their bowels, their eyes, and their ears. And the breath of the Son of Man becomes short and stifled, full of pain and evil smelling, like the breath of unclean beasts. And his blood becomes thick and evil smelling, like the water of the swamps. It clots and blackens like the night of death, and his bone becomes hard and knotted. It melts away within and breaks asunder, and a stone falling down upon a rock, and his flesh waxes fat and watery. It rots and putrid flies with scabs and boils that are an abomination. And his bowels become full with abominable filthiness, with oozing streams of decay, and multitudes of abominable worms have their habitation there. And his eyes grow dim, till dark night enshrouds them, and his ears become stopped, like the silence of the grave. And last of all shall the erring son of man lose life, for he kept not the laws of his mother, and added sin to sin. Therefore are taken from him all the gifts of the earthly mother, breath, blood, bone, flesh, bowels, eyes, and ears, and after all else, life, with which the earthly mother crowned his body. But if the erring son of man be sorry for his sins and undo them, and return again to his earthly mother. And if he do his earthly mother's laws and free himself from Satan's clutches, resisting his temptations, then does the earthly mother receive again her erring son with love and sends him her angels that they may serve him. I tell you truly, when the Son of Man resists the Satan that dwells in him and does not his will, in the same hour, are found the mother's angels there, that they may serve him with all their power and free utterly the Son of Man from the power of Satan. For no man can serve two masters, for either he served Beelzebub and his devils, or else he serves our earthly mother and her angels. Either he serves death, or he serves life. I tell you truly, Happy are those that do the laws of life and wander not upon the paths of death. For in them the forces of life wax strong, and they escape the plagues of death. And all those round about him listen to his words with amazement. For his word was with power, and he taught quite otherwise than the priests and the scribes. And though the sun was now set, they departed not to their homes. They sat round about Jesus and asked him, Master, which are these laws of life? Rest with us a while longer and teach us. We would listen to your teaching that we may be healed and become righteous. 
And Jesus sat down in the midst and said, I tell you truly, none can be happy except he do the law. And the others answered, We all do the laws of Moses, our lawgiver, even as they are written in the Holy Scriptures. And Jesus answered, Seek not the law in your scriptures, for the law is life, whereas the scripture is dead. I tell you truly, Moses received not his laws from God in writing, but through the living word. The law is living word of living God to living prophets for living men. And everything that is life is the law written. You find it in the grass, in the tree, in the river, in the mountain, in the birds of heaven, in the fishes of the sea. But seek it chiefly in yourselves. For I tell you truly, all living things are nearer to God than the scripture which is without life. God so made life and all living things that they might have by the everlasting word teach the laws of the true God to man. God wrote not the laws in the pages of books, but in your heart and in your spirit. They are in your breath, your blood, your bone, and your flesh, your bowels, your eyes, your ears, and in every little part of your body. They are present in the air, in the water, in the earth, in the plants, in the sunbeams, in the depths and in the heights. They all speak to you that you may understand the tongue and the will of the living God. But you shut your eyes that you may not see, and you shut your ears that you may not hear. I tell you truly that the scripture is the work of man, but life and all its hosts are the work of our God. Wherefore, do you not listen to the words of God which are written in his works? And wherefore, do you study the dead scriptures which are the works of the hands of men? How may we read the laws of God elsewhere than in the scriptures? Where are they written? Read them to us from there where you see them. For we know nothing else but the scriptures which we have inherited from our forefathers. Tell us the laws of which you speak, that hearing them we may be healed and justified. Jesus said, You do not understand the words of life because you are in death. Darkness darkens your eyes and your ears are stopped with deafness. For I tell you, it profits you not at all that you pour over dead scriptures if by your deeds you deny him who has given you the scriptures. I tell you truly, God and his laws are not in that which you do. They are not in gluttony and in wine bibbing, neither in riotous living, nor in lustfulness, nor in seeking after riches nor yet in hatred of your enemies. For all these things are far from the true God and from his angels. But all these things come from the kingdom of darkness and the Lord of all evils. And all these things do you carry in yourselves. And so the word and the power of God enter not into you. Because all manner of evil and all manner of abominations have their dwelling in your body and your spirit. If you will that the living God's word and his power may enter you, defile not your body and your spirit, for the body is the temple of the spirit, and the spirit is the temple of God. Purify, therefore, the temple that the Lord of the temple may dwell therein and occupy a place that is worthy of him. And from all temptations of your body and your spirit, Coming from Satan, withdraw beneath the shadow of God's heaven. Renew yourselves and fast. For I tell you truly, that Satan and his plagues may only be cast out by fasting 
and by prayer. Go by yourself and fast alone and show your fasting to no man. The living God shall see it and great shall be your reward. And fast till Beelzebub and all his evils depart from you. And all the angels of our earthly mother come and serve you. For I tell you truly, except you fast, you shall never be freed from the power of Satan and from all diseases that come from Satan. Fast and pray fervently, seeking the power of the living God for your healing. While you fast, eschew the sons of men and seek our earthly mother's angels. For he that seeks shall find. Seek the fresh air of the forest and of the fields. And there in the midst of them shall you find the angel of air. Put off your shoes and your clothing and suffer the angel of air to embrace all your body. Then breathe long and deeply that the angel of air may be brought within you. I tell you truly, the angel of air shall cast out of your body all uncleanliness which defiled it without and within. And thus shall all evil smelling and unclean things rise out of you as the smoke of fire curls upwards and it's lost in the sea of the air. For I tell you truly, holy is the angel of air who cleanses all that is unclean and makes all evil smelling things of a sweet odor. No man may come before the face of God whom the angel of air let not pass. Truly, all must be born again by air and by truth. For your body breathes the air of the earthly mother, and your spirit breathes the truth of the heavenly Father. After the angel of air, seek the angel of water. Put off your shoes and your clothing and suffer the angel of water to embrace all your body. Cast yourselves wholly into his enfolding arms. And as often as you move the air with your breath, moved with your body the water also. I tell you truly, the angel of water shall cast out of your body all uncleanliness which defiled it without and within. And all unclean and evil smelling things shall flow out of you, even as the uncleanliness of garments washed in water flow away and are lost in the stream of the river. I tell you truly, Holy is the angel of water who cleanses all that is unclean and makes all evil smelling things of a sweet odor. No man may come before the face of God whom the angel of water let not pass. In very truth, all must be born again of water and of truth. For your body bathes in the river of earthly life and your spirit bathes in the river of life everlasting. For you receive your blood from our earthly mother and the truth from our heavenly father. Think not that it is sufficient that the angel of water embrace you outwards only. I tell you truly, the uncleanness within is greater by much than the uncleanness without. And he who cleanses himself without but within remains unclean is like to tombs that outwards are painted fair but are within full of all manner of horrible uncleanliness and abominations. So I tell you truly, suffer the angel of water to baptize you also within, that you may become free from all your past sins, and that within likewise you may become as pure as the river's foam sporting in the sunlight. Seek, therefore, a large trailing gourd, Having a stalk the length of a man, take out its inwards and fill it with water from the river which the sun has warmed. Hang it upon the branch of a tree and kneel upon the ground before the angel of water and suffer the end of the stalk of the trailing gourd to enter your hinder parts that the water may flow through all your bowels. Afterwards, rest kneeling on the ground before the angel of water and pray to the living God that he will forgive you all your past sins and pray the angel of water that he will free your body from every uncleanness and disease 
and let the water run out from your body that it may carry away from within it all the unclean and evil smelling things of Satan and you shall see with your eyes and smell with your nose all the abominations and uncleanliness which defile the temple of your body even all the sins which abode in your body tormenting you with all manner of pains I tell you truly baptism with water frees you from all of these renew your baptism with water and on every day of your fast till the day when you see that the water which flows out of you is as pure as the river's foam then betake your body to the coursing river and there in the arms of the angel of water render thanks to the living God that he has freed you from your sins this holy baptizing by the angel of water is rebirth unto the new life for your eyes shall henceforth see and your ears shall hear sin no more therefore after your baptism that the angels of air and of water may eternally abide in you and serve you evermore and if afterward there remain within you aught of your past sins and uncleanliness Seek the angel of sunlight. Put off your shoes and your clothing and suffer the angel of sunlight to embrace all your body. Then breathe long and deeply that the angel of sunlight may be brought within you. And the angel of sunlight shall cast out of your body all evil smelling and unclean things which defiled it without and within. And all unclean and evil smelling things shall rise from you even as the darkness of night fades before the brightness of the rising sun for I tell you truly holy is the angel of sunlight who cleans out all uncleanliness and makes all evil smelling things of a sweet odor none may come before the face of God whom the angel of sunlight let not pass truly all must be born again of sun and of truth for your body bask in the sunlight of the earthly mother and your spirit bask in the sunlight of the truth of the heavenly father. The angels of air and of water and of sunlight are brethren. They were given to the son of man that they might serve him and that he might go always from one to the other. Holy likewise is their embrace they are indivisible children of the earthly mother so do not you put asunder those whom earth and heaven have made one let these three brother angels enfold you every day and let them abide with you through all your fasting for I tell you truly the power of devils all sins and uncleanliness shall depart in haste from that body which is embraced by these three angels as thieves flee from a deserted house at the coming of the Lord of the house, one by the door, one by the window, and the third by the roof, each where he is found and whither he is able, even so shall flee from your bodies all devils of evil, all past sins, and all uncleanliness and diseases which defile the temple of your bodies. When the earthly mother's angels enter into your bodies in such wise that the lords of the temple repossess it again, then shall all evil smells depart in haste by your breath and by your skin, corrupt waters by your mouth and by your skin, by your hinder and your privy parts. And all these things you shall see with your eyes and smell with your nose and touch with your hands. And when all sins and uncleanliness are gone from your body, your blood shall become as pure as our earthly mother's blood and as the river's foam sporting in the sunlight. And your breath shall become as pure as the breath of odorous flowers. Your flesh as pure as the flesh of fruits reddening upon the leaves of trees. The light of your eye as clear and bright as brightness of the sun shining upon the blue sky. And now 
shall all the angels of the earthly mother serve you, and your breath, your blood, your flesh shall be one with the breath, the blood, and the flesh of the earthly mother, that your spirit also may become one with the spirit of your heavenly father. For truly, no one can reach the heavenly father unless through the earthly mother, even as no newborn baby can understand the teaching of his father till his mother has suckled him, bathed him, nursed him, put him to sleep, and nurtured him. While the child is yet small, his place is with his mother, and he must obey his mother. When the child is grown up, his father takes him to work at his side in the field, and the child comes back to his mother only when the hour of dinner and supper is come. And now, his father teaches him that he may become skilled in the works of his father. And when the father sees that his son understands his teaching and does his work well, he gives him all his possessions that they may belong to his beloved son and that his son may continue his father's work. I tell you truly, happy is that son who accepts the counsel of his mother and walks therein. And a hundred times more happy is that son who accepts and walks also in the counsel of his father. For it was said to you, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon this earth. But I say to you, sons of man, Honor your earthly mother, and keep all her laws, that your days may be long on this earth and honor your heavenly father that eternal life may be yours in the heavens for the heavenly father is a hundred times greater than all fathers by seed and by blood and greater is the earthly mother than all mothers by the body and dearer is the son of man in the eyes of his heavenly father and of his earthly mother than our children in the eyes of their fathers by seed and by blood and of their mothers by the body. And more wise are the words and laws of your heavenly father and of your earthly mother than the words and the will of all fathers by seed and by blood and of all mothers by the body. And of more worth also is the inheritance of your heavenly father and of your earthly mother, the everlasting kingdom of earthly and heavenly life, then all the inheritances of your fathers by seed and by blood, and of your mothers by the body. And your true brothers are all those who do the will of your heavenly father and of your earthly mother, and not your brothers by blood. I tell you truly that your true brothers in the will of the heavenly father and of the earthly mother will love you a thousand times more than your brothers by blood. For since the days of Cain and Abel, when brothers by blood transgress the will of God, there is no true brotherhood by blood. And brothers do unto brothers as do strangers. Therefore I say to you, Love your true brothers in the will of God a thousand times more than your brothers by blood. For your heavenly father is love. For your earthly mother is love. For the son of man is love. It is by love that the heavenly father and the earthly mother and the son of man become one. For the spirit of the Son of Man was created from the spirit of the Heavenly Father, and his body from the body of the earthly mother. Become, therefore, perfect, as the spirit of your Heavenly Father and the body of your earthly mother are perfect. And so love your Heavenly Father, as he loves your spirit. And so love your earthly mother, as she loves your body. And so love your true brothers as your heavenly father and your earthly mother love them. And then your heavenly father shall give you his Holy Spirit. And your earthly mother shall give you her holy body. And then 
shall the sons of men like true brothers give love one to another the love which they received from their heavenly father and from their earthly mother and they shall all become comforters one of another and then shall disappear from the earth all evil and all sorrow and there shall be love and joy upon earth and then shall the earth be like the heavens and the kingdom of God shall come and then shall come the son of man in all his glory to inherit the kingdom of God and then shall the sons of men divide their divine inheritance the kingdom of God for the sons of men live in the heavenly father and in the earthly mother and the heavenly father and the earthly mother live in them and then with the kingdom of God shall come the end of all times for the heavenly father's love gives to all life everlasting in the kingdom of God for love is eternal love is stronger than death Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I tell what is to come and know all secrets and all wisdom, and though I have faith strong as the storm which lifts mountains from their seat, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and give all my fire that I may receive from my father, but have not love, I am in no wise profited. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, works not evil, knows not pride, is not rude, neither selfish, is slow to anger, imagines no mischief, rejoices not in injustice, but delights in justice. Love defends all, love believes all, love hopes all, love bears all, never exhausts itself, but as for tongues, they shall cease, and as for knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we have truth in part and error in part, but when the fullness of perfection is come, that which is in part shall be blotted out. When a man was a child, he spoke as a child, understood as a child, thought as a child. But when he became a man, he put away childish things. For now we see through a glass and through dark sayings. Now we know in part. But when we are come before the face of God, we shall not know in part, but even as we are taught by him. And now remain these three, faith and hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. And now I speak to you in the living tongue of the living God, through the Holy Spirit of our Heavenly Father. There is none yet among you that can understand all this of which I speak. He who expounds to you the scriptures speaks to you in a dead tongue of dead men through his deceased and mortal body. Him, therefore, can all men understand. For all men are diseased and are all in death. No one sees the light of life. Blind man leads blind on the dark paths of sins, diseases and sufferings, and at the last all fall into the pit of death. I am sent to you by the Father, that I may make the light of life to shine before you. The light lightens itself and the darkness, but the darkness knows only itself and knows not the light. I have still many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them yet, for your eyes are used to the darkness, and the full light of the Heavenly Father would make you blind. Therefore, you cannot yet understand which I speak to you concerning the Heavenly Father who sent me to you. Follow 
Therefore first, only the laws of your earthly mother, of which I have told you. And when her angels shall have cleansed and renewed your bodies and strengthened your eyes, you will be able to bear the light of our Heavenly Father. And you can gaze on the brightness of the noonday. Sun with unflinching eyes, you can then look upon the blinding light of your Heavenly Father, which is a thousand times brighter than the brightness of a thousand suns. But how should you look upon the blinding light of your Heavenly Father when you cannot even bear the shining of the blazing sun? Believe me, the sun is as the flame of a candle beside the sun of truth of the Heavenly Father. Have but faith, therefore, and hope, and love. I tell you truly, you shall not want your reward. If you believe in my words, you believe in him who sent me, who is the Lord of all, and with whom all things are possible. For what is impossible with men? All things are possible with God. If you believe in the angels of the earthly mother and do her laws, your faith shall sustain you, and you shall never see disease. Have hope also in the love of your heavenly Father, for he who trusts in him shall never be deceived, nor shall he ever see death. Love one another, for God is love, and so shall his angels know that you walk in his path. And then shall all the angels come before your face and serve you. And Satan with all sins, diseases, and uncleanliness shall depart from your body. Go eschew your sins, repent yourselves, baptize yourselves that you may be born again and sin no more. Then Jesus rose, but all else remained sitting, for every man felt the power of his word. And then the full moon appeared between the breaking clouds and folded Jesus in its brightness. And sparks flew upward from his hair, and he stood among them in the moonlight, as though he hovered in the air. And no man moved, neither was the voice of any heard. And no one knew how long time had passed, but time stood still. Then Jesus stretched out his hands to them and said, Peace! be with you and so he departed as a breath of wind sways the green of trees and for a long while yet the company sat still and then they woke in the silence one man after another like as from a long dream but none would go as if the words of him who had left them ever sounded in their ears and they sat as though they listened to some wondrous music but at last one as it were, a little fearfully said, How good it is to be here. Another, Would that this night were everlasting. And others, Would that he might be with us always. Of a truth, he is God's messenger. For he planted hope within our hearts. And no man wished to go home, saying, I go not home where all is dark and joyless. Why should we go home? where no one loves us. And they spoke on this wise, for they were almost all poor, lame, blind, maimed, beggars, homeless, despised in their wretchedness, who were only born for pity's sake in the houses where they found a few days refuge. Even certain who had both home and family said, we also will stay with you. For every man felt that the words of him who was gone bound the little company with threads invisible, and all felt that they were born again. They saw before them a shining world, even when the moon was hidden in the clouds, and in the hearts of all blossomed wondrous flowers of wondrous beauty, flowers of joy. And when the bright sunbeams appeared over the earth's rim, they all felt that it was the son of the coming kingdom of God, and with joyful countenances they went forth to meet God's angels. And many unclean and sick followed Jesus' words and sought the banks of the murmuring streams. They put off their shoes and their clothing. They fasted and they gave up their bodies to the angels of air, 
of water and of sunshine. And earthly mother's angels embraced them, possessing their bodies both inwards and outwards. And all of them saw all evils, sins, and uncleanliness depart in haste from them. And the breath of some became as stinking as that which is loose from the bowels. And some had an issue of spittle, an evil smelling, and unclean vomit rose from their inward parts. All these uncleanliness flowed by their mouths, in some by the nose, in others by the eyes and ears. And many did have a noisy and abominable sweat come from all their body over all their skin. And on many limbs great hot boils broke forth from which came all uncleanliness with an evil smell. And urine flowed abundantly from their body, and in many their urine was all but dried up and became thick as the honey of bees, that of others was almost red or black, and as hard almost as the sands of rivers, and many belched stinking gases from their bowels, like the breath of devils, and their stench became so great that none could bear it. And when they baptized themselves, the angel of water entered their bodies, and from them flowed out all the abominations and uncleanliness of their past sins. And like a falling mountain stream gushed from their bodies a multitude of hard and soft abominations. And the ground where their waters flowed was polluted, and so great became the stench that none could remain there. And the devils left their bowels in the shape of multitude worms which writhed and in potent rage after the angel of water had cast them out of the bowels of the Son of Men. And then descended upon them the power of the angels of sunshine, and they perished there in their desperate writhings, trod underfoot by the angel of sunshine. And all were trembling with terror when they looked upon all these abominations of Satan from which the angels had saved them. And they rendered thanks to God who had sent his angels for their deliverance. And there were some whom pains tormented, which would not depart from them, and knowing not what they should do, they resolved to send one of them to Jesus, for they greatly wished he should be with them. And when two were going to seek him, they saw Jesus approaching by the bank of the river. And their hearts were filled with hope and joy when they heard his greeting. Peace be with you. And many were the questions that they desired to ask him, but in their astonishment they could not begin. For nothing came into their minds. Then said Jesus to them, I come because you need me. And one cried out, Master, we do indeed. Come and free us from our pains. And Jesus spoke to them in parables. You are like the prodigal son, who for many years did eat and drink, and passed his days in riotousness and lechery with his friends. And every week, without his father's knowledge, he incurred new debts, and squandered all in a few days. And the money lenders always lent to him, because his father possessed great riches and always paid patiently the debts of his son. And in vain did he with fair words admonish his son, for he never listened to the admonitions of his father, who besought him in vain that he would give up his debaucheries, which had no end, and that he would go to his fields to watch over the labor of his servants. And the son always promised him everything if he would pay his old debts. But the next day, he began again. And for more than seven years, the son continued in his riotous living. But at last, his father lost patience and no more paid to the money lenders the debts of his son. If I continue to always pay, he said, there will be no end to the sins of my son. Then the money lenders who were deceived in their wrath took the son into slavery that he might by his daily toil pay back to them the money which he had borrowed. 
and then ceased the eating and drinking and the daily excesses. From morning until night, by the sweat of his face, he watered the fields, and all of his limbs ached with the unaccustomed labor. And he lived upon dry bread, and had naught but his tears with which he could water it. And three days after he suffered so much from the heat and from weariness that he said to his master, I can work no more, for all my limbs do ache. How long would you torment me? Till the day when by the labor of your hands you pay me all your debts, and when seven years are past, you will be free. And the desperate son answered weeping, but I cannot bear so much as seven days. Have pity on me, for all my limbs do burn and ache. And the wicked creditor cried out, Press on with the work. If you could for seven years spend your days and your nights in riotousness, now must you work for seven years. I will not forgive you till you pay back all your debts to the uttermost drachma. And the son, with his limbs racked with pain, went back despairing to the fields to continue his work already. He could hardly stand upon his feet because of his weariness and of his pains. When the seventh day was come, the Sabbath day in which no man works in the field, then the son gathered the remnant of his strength and staggered to the house of his father. And he cast himself down at his father's feet and said, Father, believe me for the last time and forgive me all my offenses against you. I swear to you that I will never again live riotously and that I will be your obedient son in all things. Free me from the hands of my oppressor. Father, look upon me and upon my sick limbs and harden not your heart. Then tears came into his father's eyes and he took his son in his arms and said, Let us rejoice, for today is a great joy is given me because I have found again my beloved son who was lost. And he clothed him with his choicest raiment, and all the day long they made merry. And on the morning of the morrow he gave his son a bag of silver, that he might pay to his creditors all that he owed them. And when his son came back, he said to him, My son, do you see that it is easy through riotous living to incur debts for seven years, but their payment is difficult by the heavy labor of seven years. Father, it is indeed hard to pay them, even for seven days. And his father admonished him, saying, For this once alone has it been permitted you to pay your debts in seven days instead of seven years. The rest is forgiven you. But take heed that in the time to come you do not incur more debts. For I tell you truly, that none else but your father forgives you your debts, because you are his son. For with all else, you would have had to labor hard for seven years, as it is commanded in our laws. My father, I will henceforth be your loving and obedient son, and I will not any more incur debts, for I know that their payment is hard. And he went to his father's field and watched every day over the work of his father's laborers. And he never made his laborers work hard, for he remembered his own heavy labor. And the years passed, and his father's possession increased even more and more beneath his hand. For the blessing of his father was upon his labor. And slowly he gave back tenfold to his father all that he had squandered in the seven years. And when his father saw that his son used well his servants and all his possessions, he said to him, My son, I see that my possessions are in good hands. I give you all my cattle, my house, my lands, and my treasures. Let all this be your heritage. Continue increasing it that I may have delight in you. And when the son had received his inheritance from his father, he forgave their debts to all his debtors who could not pay him. For he did not forget that his debt also had been forgiven when he could not pay it. And God blessed him with long life 
with many children and with much riches because he was kind to all his servants and to all his cattle. Then Jesus turned to the sick folk and said, I speak to you in parables that you may better understand God's word. The seven years of eating and drinking and of riotous living are the sins of the past. The wicked creditor is Satan. The debts are diseases. The heavy labor is pains. The prodigal son, he is yourselves. The payment of the debts is the casting from you of evils and devils and the healing of your body. The bag of silver received from the Father is the liberating power of the angels. The Father is God. The Father's possessions are heaven and earth. The servants of the Father are the angels. The Father's field is the world, which is changed into the kingdom of the heavens. If the sons of man work their own together with the angels of the heavenly Father, for I tell you, it is better that the son should obey his father and keep watch over his father's servants in the field than that he should become the debtor of the wicked creditor and toil and sweat and serve them to repay all his debts. It is better likewise if the sons of man obey the laws of their heavenly father and work together with his angels and upon his kingdom in that they should become the debtors of Satan, the Lord of death, of all sins and all diseases, and that they should suffer with pains and sweat till they have repaid all their sins. I tell you truly, great and many are your sins. Many years have you yielded into the enticings of Satan. You have been gluttonous, wine-bibbers, and gone a-whoring, and your past debts have multiplied, and now you must repay them, and payment is difficult and hard. Be not therefore already impatient after the third day, like the prodigal son, but wait patiently for the seventh day, which is sanctified by God, and then go with humble and obedient heart before the face of your heavenly Father that he may forgive you your sins and all your past debts. I tell you truly, your heavenly Father loves you without end, for he also allows you to pay in seven days the debts of seven years. Those that owe the sins and diseases of seven years but pay honestly and persevere till the seventh day, to them shall our heavenly Father forgive the debts of all these seven years. If we sin for seven times seven years, ask a sick man who suffered horribly. Even in that case, the Heavenly Father forgives you all your debts in seven times seven days. Happy are those that persevere till the end. For the devils of Satan write all your evil deeds in a book, in the book of your body and your spirit. I tell you truly, there is not one sinful deed, but it is written, even from the beginning of the world, before our Heavenly Father, for you may escape the laws made by kings, but the laws of your God, these may none of the sons of man escape when you come before the face of God. The devils of Satan bear witness against you with your deed. And God sees your sins written in the book of your body and of your spirit and is sad in his heart. But if you repent of your sins and by fasting and prayer you seek the angels of God, then each day that you continue to fast and to pray, God's angels blot out one year of your evil deeds from the book of your body and your spirit. And when the last page is also blotted out and cleansed from all your sins, you stand before the face of God and God rejoices in his heart and forgets all your sins. He frees you from the clutches of Satan and from suffering. He takes you within his house and commands that all his servants 
All his angels serve you. Long life does he give you, and you shall never see disease. And if, thenceforward, instead of sinning, you pass your days in doing good deeds, then the angels of God shall write all your good deeds in the book of your body and of your spirit. I tell you truly, no good deed remains unwritten before God, not from the beginning of the world. For from your kings and your governors you may wait in vain for your reward, but never do your good deeds want their reward from God. And when you come before the face of God, his angels bear witness for you with your good deeds. And God sees your good deeds written in your bodies and in your spirits and rejoices in his heart. He blesses your body and your spirit and all your deeds and gives you for a heritage his earthly and heavenly kingdom that in it you may have life everlasting. Happy is he who can enter into the kingdom of God for he shall never see death. And a great silence fell at his words. And those that were discouraged took new strength from his words and continued to fast and pray. And he who had spoken first said to him, I will persevere to the seventh day. And the second likewise said to him, I also will persevere to seven times seventh day. Jesus answered them, Happy are those that persevere to the end, for they shall inherit the earth. And there were many sick among them, tormented with grievous pains, and they hardly crawled to Jesus' feet, for they could no longer walk upon their feet. They said, Master, we are grievously tormented with pain. Tell us what we shall do. And they showed Jesus their feet in which the bones were twisted and knotted and said, Neither the angel of air, nor of water, nor of sunshine has assuaged our pains. Notwithstanding that we baptize ourselves and do fast and pray and follow your words in all things, I tell you truly, your bones will be healed, be not discouraged, but seek for cure, nigh the healer of bones, the angel of earth. For thence were your bones taken, and thither will they return. And he pointed with his hand to where the running of water and the sun's heat had softened to clay mud the earth by the edge of the water. Sink your feet in the mire, that the embrace of the angel of earth may draw out from your bones all uncleanliness and all disease. And you will see Satan and your pains fly from the embrace of the angel of earth and the knots of your bones will vanish away and they will be straightened and all your pains will disappear. And the sick followed his words for they knew that they would be healed. And there were also other sick who suffered much from their pains Howbeit they persisted in their fasting, and their force was spent, and great heat tormented them. And when they would have arisen from their bed to go to Jesus, their heads began to turn, as if it were a gusty wind which shook them. And as often as they tried to stand upon their feet, they fell back to the ground. Then Jesus went to them and said, You suffer, for Satan and his diseases torment your body. But fear not, for their power over you will quickly end. For Satan is like a choleric neighbor who entered his neighbor's house while he was absent, intending to take his goods away to his own house. But some told the other that his enemy was ravaging within his house, and he came back to his house running. And when the wicked neighbor, having gathered together all that pleased him, saw from afar the master of the house returning in haste, then he was very wroth 
that he could not take all the way and set to breaking and spoiling all that was there to destroy all so that even if the things might not be his the other might have nothing but immediately the Lord of the house came in and before the wicked neighbor fulfilled his purpose he took him and cast him out of the house I tell you truly even so did Satan enter your bodies which are the habitation of God and he took in his power all that he wished to steal your breath, your blood, your bone, your flesh, your bowels, your eyes, and your ears. And by your fasting and your prayer, you have called back the Lord of your body and his angels. And now Satan sees that the true Lord of your body returns, and that it is the end of his power. Wherefore, in his wrath, he gathers his strength once again that he may destroy your bodies before the coming of the Lord. It is for this that Satan torments you so grievously, for he feels that the end is come. But let not your hearts tremble, for soon will the angels of God appear to occupy again their abodes and rededicate them as temples of God, and they will seize Satan. Cast him from your bodies with all his diseases and all his uncleanliness. And happy you will be, for you will receive the reward of your steadfastness and you will never see disease. And there was among the sick one that was more tormented by Satan than all the others. And his body was as parched as a skeleton and his skin yellow as a fallen leaf. He was so weak already that he could not even upon his hands crawl to Jesus and cried only to him from afar Master have pity on me but never has a man suffered not from the beginning of the world as I do suffer I know that you are indeed sent by God and I know that if you will you can straightway cast out Satan from my body do not the angels of God obey God's messenger? Come, master, and cast out Satan from me now, for he rages angrily within me and his grievous in his torment. And Jesus answered him, Satan torments you thus greatly because you have already fasted many days, and you do not pay to him his tribute. You do not feed him with all the abominations with which you hitherto defile the temple of your spirit. You torment Satan with hunger, and so in his anger he torments you also. Fear not, for I tell you, Satan will be destroyed before your body is destroyed. For while you fast and pray, the angels of God protect your body, that Satan's power may not destroy you. And the anger of Satan is impotent against the angels of God. Then they all came to Jesus and with loud cries besought him, saying, Master, have compassion on him, for he suffers more than we all. And if you do not at once cast Satan out of him, we fear he will not live until tomorrow. And Jesus answered them, saying, Great is your faith. Be it according to your faith. And you shall see soon, face to face, the frightful countenance of Satan and the power of the Son of Man. For I will cast out from you the powerful Satan by the strength of the innocent Lamb of God, the weakest creature of the Lord. For the Holy Spirit of God makes more powerful the weakest than the strongest. And Jesus milked an ewe, which was feeding among the grass. And he put the milk upon the sand made hot by the sun, saying, Lo, the power of the angel of water has entered this milk. And now the power of the angel of sunshine will enter it also. And the milk became hot by the strength of the sun. And now the angels of water and of sun will join with the angel of air. And lo, the vapor of the hot milk began to rise slowly into the air. Come. 
and breathe in by your mouth the strength of the angels of water, of sunshine, and of air, that it may come into your body and cast out the safe thing from you. And the sick man whom Satan tormented did breathe within himself deeply the rising whitish vapor. Straightway will Satan leave your body, since for three days he starves and finds no food within you. He will come out of you to satisfy his hunger by the hot steaming milk, for this food finds favor in his sight. He will smell its smell and will not be able to resist the hunger which has tormented him three days already. But the Son of Man will destroy his body that he may torment none else again. Then the sick man's body was sieged with an egg, and he wretched as though he would vomit, but he could not. And he gasped for air, for his breath was spent, and he fainted on the lap of Jesus. Now does Satan leave his body? See him. And Jesus pointed to the sick man's open mouth. And then they all saw with astonishment and terror that Satan was coming out from his mouth in the shape of an abominable worm, straight towards the steaming milk. And Jesus took two sharp stones in his hands and crushed the head of Satan and drew out from the sick man all the body of the monster which was almost as long as the man. And the abominable worm came out of the sick man's throat. He recovered at once his breath and then all his pains ceased. And the others looked with terror at the abominable body of Satan. See? What an abominable beast you carried and nourished in your body for long years. I have cast it out of you and killed it, that it may never again torment you. Give thanks to God that his angels have made you free and sin no more. Let Satan return to you again. Let your body be henceforth a temple dedicated to your God. And they were all amazed at his words and at his power. And they said, Master, you are indeed God's messenger and do know all secrets. And you, answered Jesus, be true sons of God, that you also may partake in his power and in the knowledge of all secrets. For wisdom and power can come only from the love of God. Love therefore your heavenly father and your earthly mother with all your heart and with all your spirit and serve them that their angels may serve you also. Let all your deeds be sacrificed to God and feed not Satan for the wages of sin is death but with God lies the reward of the good, his love which is knowledge and power of eternal life. And they all knelt down to give thanks to God for his love. And Jesus departed saying, I will come again to all who persist in prayer and fasting till the seventh day. Peace be with you. And the sick man from whom Jesus has cast out the Satan stood up for the strength of life had come back to him. He breathed out deeply and his eyes became clear. For every pain had left him, and he cast himself down upon the ground where Jesus had stood, and he kissed the print of his feet, and he wept. And it was by the bed of a stream, many sick fasted and prayed with God's angels for seven days and seven nights. And great was their reward, because they followed Jesus' words. And with the passing of the seventh day, all their pains left them. And when the sun rose over the earth's rim, they saw Jesus coming towards them from the mountain with the brightness of the rising sun about his head. Peace be with you. And they said no word at all, but only cast themselves down before him and touched the hem of his garment in token of their healing. Give thanks not to me, but to your earthly mother who sent you her healing angels. Go and sin no more, that you may never again see disease, and let the healing angels become your guardians. They answered him, 
Where should we go, Master? For with you are the words of eternal life. Tell us, what are the sins which we must shun, that we may never more see disease? Jesus answered, Be it so according to your faith. And he sat down among them, saying, It was said to them of old time, Honor thy heavenly father and thy earthly mother, and do their commandments, that thy days may be long upon the earth. And next, afterward, was given this commandment, Thou shalt not kill, for life is given to all by God, and that which God has given, let not man take away. For I tell you truly, from one mother proceeds all that lives upon the earth. Therefore, he who kills, kills his brother, and from him will the earthly mother turn away, and will pluck from him her quickening breast. He will be shunned by her angels, and Satan will have his dwelling in his body, and the flesh of slain beast in his body will become his own tomb. For I tell you truly, he who kills kills himself, and whoso eats the flesh of slain beast eats of the body of death. For in his blood every drop of their blood turns to poison, in his breath their breath to stink, in his flesh their flesh to boils, in his bones their bones to chalk, in his bowels their bowels to decay, in his eyes their eyes to scales, in his ears their ears to waxy issue, and their death will become his death. For only in the service of your heavenly father are your debts of seven years forgiven in seven days. But Satan forgives you nothing and you must pay him for all, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, life for life, death for death. For the wages of sin is death. Kill not, neither eat the flesh of your innocent prey, lest you become the slaves of Satan. But that is the path of sufferings, it leads unto death. But do the will of God that his angels may serve you on the way of life. Obey, therefore, the words of God. Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, to everything that creeps upon the earth wherein there is breath of life I give every green herb for meat also the milk of everything that move and live upon the earth shall be meat for you even as the green herb have I give unto them so I give their milk unto you but flesh and the blood which quickens it shall you not eat and surely your spurting blood will I require your blood wherein is your soul I will require all slain beasts and the souls of all slain men. For I, the Lord thy God, am a strong and jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And after these words, they all remain silent, save one who called out, What am I to do, Master? If I see a wild beast rend my brother in the forest, should I let my brother perish or kill the wild beast? Shall not I transgress the law? And Jesus answered and said, It was said to them of old time, All beasts that move upon the earth, all the fish of the sea, and all the fowl of the air are given unto thy power. I tell you truly, of all creatures living upon the earth, God created only man after his image. 
Wherefore beasts are for man and not man for beast. You do not therefore transgress the law if you kill the wild beast to save your brother's life. For I tell you truly, a man is more than the beast, but he who kills the beast without a cause, though the beast attack him not, through lust for slaughter, or for its flesh, or for its hide, or yet for its tusk, evil is the deed which he does, for he is turned into a wild beast himself. Wherefore is his end also as the end of the wild beast? Then another said, Moses, the greatest in Israel, suffered our forefathers to eat the flesh of clean beasts and forbade only the flesh of unclean beasts. Why therefore do you forbid us the flesh of all beasts? Which law comes from God? That of Moses or your law? And Jesus answered, God gave by Moses ten commandments to your forefathers. These commandments are hard, said your forefathers, and they could not keep them. When Moses saw this, he had compassion on his people and would not that they perish. And then he gave them ten times, ten commandments. For he whose feet are strong as the mountain of Zion needs no crutches. But he whose limbs do shake gets further having crutches than without them. And Moses said to the Lord, My heart is filled with sorrow, for my people will be lost. For they are without knowledge and are not able to understand thy commandments. They are as little children who cannot yet understand their father's words. Suffer, Lord, that I give them other laws, that they may not perish. If they may not be with thee, Lord, let them not be against thee, that they may sustain themselves, and when the time has come and they are ripe for thy words, reveal to them thy laws. For that did Moses break the two tablets of stone whereon were written the Ten Commandments, and he gave them ten times ten in their stead. And of these ten times the scribes and Pharisees have made a hundred times ten commandments. And they have laid unbearable burdens on your shoulders that they themselves do not carry. For the more nigh are the commandments to God, the less do we need. And the farther they are from God, then the more do we need. Wherefore are the laws of the Pharisees and scribes innumerable? The laws of the Son of Man seven, of the angels three, and of God one. Therefore, I teach you only those laws which you can understand, that you may become men and follow the seven laws of the Son of Man. Then will the unknown angels of the Heavenly Father also reveal their laws to you, that God's Holy Spirit may descend upon you and lead you to his law. And all were astonished at his wisdom and asked him, Continue, Master, and teach us all the laws which we can receive. And Jesus continued, God commanded your forefathers, Thou shalt not kill. But their heart was hardened, and they killed. Then Moses desired that at least they should not kill men, and he suffered them to kill beasts. And then the heart of your forefathers was hardened yet more, and they killed men and beasts likewise. But I do say to you, Kill neither men nor beasts, nor yet the food which goes into your mouth. For if you eat living food, the same will quicken you. But if you kill your food, the dead food will kill you also. For life comes only from life, and death comes always death. For everything which kills your foods kills your bodies also. And everything which kills your bodies kills your souls also. And your bodies become what your foods are, even as your spirits likewise become what your thoughts are. Therefore, eat not anything which fire or frost or water has destroyed. For burned, frozen, and rotted foods will burn, freeze, and rot your body also. Be not like the foolish husbandman who sowed in his ground cooked and frozen and rotten seeds. And the autumn came, 
and his fields bore nothing, and great was his distress. But be like the husbandman who sowed in his field living seed, and whose field bore living ears of wheat, paying a hundredfold for the seeds which he planted. For I tell you truly, live only by the fire of life, and prepare not your foods with the fire of death, which kills your foods, your bodies, and your souls also. Master, where is the fire of life? Ask some of them. In you, in your blood, and in your bodies. And the fire of death, ask others. It is the fire which blazes outside your body, which is hotter than your blood. With that fire of death, you cook your foods in your homes and in your fields. I tell you truly, it is the same fire which destroys your foods and your bodies, even as the fire of malice, which ravages your thoughts, ravages your spirits. For your body is that which you eat, and your spirit is that which you drink. Eat nothing, therefore, which a stronger fire than the fire of life has killed. Wherefore, prepare and eat all fruits of trees, and all grasses of the fields, and all milk of beasts good for eating. All these are fed and ripened by the fire of life. All are the gift of the angels of our earthly mother. But eat nothing to which only the fire of death gives savor, for such is of Satan. How should we cook our daily bread without fire, master? At some with great astonishment. Let the angels of God prepare your bread. Moisten your wheat, that the angel of water may enter it. Then set it in the air, that the angel of air may also embrace it, and leave it from morning to evening beneath the sun, that the angel of sunshine may descend upon it. And the blessing of the three angels will soon make the germ of life to sprout in your wheat, then crush your grain and make thin wafers as did your forefathers when they departed out of Egypt, the house of bondage. Put them back again beneath the sun from its appearing, and when it is risen to its highest in the heavens, turn them over on the other side that they may be embraced there also by the angel of sunshine, and leave them there until the sun be set. For the angels of water, of air, and of sunshine fed and ripened the wheat in the field, and they likewise must prepare also your bread. And the same sun which, with the fire of life, made the wheat to grow and ripen, must cook your bread with the same fire. For the fire of the sun gives life to the wheat, to the bread, and to the body. But the fire of death kills the wheat, the bread, and the body. And the living angels of the living God serve only living men. For God is the God of the living and not the God of the dead. So eat always from the table of God the fruits of the trees, the grain and grasses of the field, the milk of the beast and the honey of the bees. For everything beyond these is of Satan and leads by the way of sins and of diseases unto death. But the foods which you eat from the abundant table of God give strength and youth to your body and you will never see disease. For the table of God fed Methuselah of old and I tell you truly, if you live even as he lived, then will the God of the living give you also long life upon the earth as was his. For I tell you truly, the God of the living is richer than all the rich of the earth, and his abundant table is richer than the richest table of feasting of all the rich upon the earth. Eat, therefore, all your life at the table of our earthly mother, and you will never see want. And when you eat at her table, eat all things even as they are found on the table of the earthly mother. Cook not, neither mix all things one with another lest your bowels become as steaming bogs. For I tell you truly, this is abominable in the eyes of the Lord. And be not like the greedy servant who always ate up at the table of his Lord, the portions of others. And he devoured everything himself and mixed all together in his gluttony. And seeing that, his Lord was wroth with him.
and drove him from the table. And when all had ended their meal, he mixed together all that remained upon the table and called the greedy servant to him and said, Take and eat all this with the swine, for your place is with them and not at my table. Take ye, therefore, and defile not with all kinds of abominations the temple of your bodies. Be content with two or three sorts of food, which you will find always upon the table of our earthly mother, and desire not to devour all things which you see around you. For I tell you truly, if you mix together all sorts of food in your body, then the peace of your body will cease, and endless war will rage in you. And it will be blotted out even as homes and kingdoms divided against themselves work their own destruction. For your God is the God of peace and does never help division. Arouse not, therefore, against you the wrath of God, lest he drive you from his table, unless you be compelled to go to the table of Satan, where the fire of sins, diseases, and death will corrupt your body. And when you eat, Never eat unto fullness. Flee the temptations of Satan and listen to the voice of God's angels. For Satan and his power tempt you always to eat more and more. But live by the Spirit and resist the desires of the body. And your fasting is always pleasing in the eyes of the angels of God. So give heed to how much you have eaten when your body is sated. And always eat less by a third. Let the weight of your daily food be not less than a mina, but mark that it go not beyond two. Then will the angels of God serve you always, and you will never fall into the bondage of Satan and of his diseases. Trouble not the work of the angels in your body by eating often. For I tell you truly, he who eats more than twice in a day does in him the work of Satan. And the angels of God leave his body, and soon Satan will take possession of it. Eat only when the sun is highest in the heavens, and again when it is set, and you will never see disease, for such finds favor in the eyes of the Lord. And if you will that the angels of God rejoice in your body, and that Satan shun you afar, then sit but once in the day at the table of God, and then your days will be long upon the earth for this is pleasing in the eyes of the Lord eat always when the table of God is served before you and eat always of that which you find upon the table of God for I tell you truly God knows well what your body needs and when it needs in the coming of the month of Ejar eat barley from the month of Sivan eat wheat the most perfect among all seed-bearing herbs. And let your daily bread be made from wheat, that the Lord may take care of your bodies. From Tammuz, eat the sour grape, that your body may diminish, and Satan may depart from it. In the month of Elul, gather the grape, that the juice may serve you as drink. In the month of Marchesvan, gather the sweet grape, dried and sweetened by the angel of sun that your bodies may increase for the angels of the Lord dwell in them. You should eat figs rich in juice in the months of Ab and Shebat and what remain. Let the angel of sun keep them for you. Eat them with the meat of almonds in all the months when the trees bear no fruits and the herbs which come after rain. These eat in the month of the bet that your blood may be cleansed of all your sins. And in the same month, begin to eat also the milk of your breast, because for this did the Lord give the herbs of the fields to all the beasts which render the milk, that they might with their milk eat man. For I tell you truly, happy are they that eat only at the table of God and eschew all the abominations of Satan. Eat not unclean foods brought from far countries, but eat always that which your trees bear. For your God knows well what is needful for you, and where and when. And he gives to all peoples of all kingdoms for food that which is best for each. Eat not as the heathen do, who stuff themselves in haste, defiling their bodies with all manner of abominations. 
For the power of God's angels enters into you with the living food which the Lord gives you from his royal table. And when you eat, have above you the angel of air, and below you the angel of war. Breathe long and deeply at all your meals, that the angel of air may bless your repast, and chew well your food with your teeth, that it become water, and that the angel of water turn it into blood in your body. And eat slowly, as it were a prayer you make to the Lord. For well, I tell you truly, the power of God enters into you, if you eat after this manner at his table. But Satan turns into a steaming bog, the body of him upon whom the angels of air and water do not descend at his repast. And the Lord suffers him no longer at his table. For the table of the Lord is an altar, and he who eats at the table of God is in a temple. For well, I tell you truly, the body of the Son of Man is turned into a temple, and his inwards into an altar. If he does the commandments of God, Wherefore put not upon the altar of the Lord when your spirit is vexed, neither think upon any one with anger in the temple of God, and enter only into the Lord's sanctuary when you feel in yourselves the call of his angels. For all that you eat in sorrow, or in anger, or without desire, becomes a poison in your body. For the breath of Satan defiles all these. Place with joy your offerings upon the altar of your body. And let all evil thoughts depart from you when you receive into your body the power of God from his table. And never sit at the table of God before he call you by the angel of appetite. Rejoice, therefore, always with God's angels at their royal table. For this is pleasing to the heart of the Lord. And your life will be long upon the earth. For the most precious of God's servants will serve you all your days, the angel of joy. And forget not that every seventh day is holy and consecrated to God. On six days feed your body with the gifts of the earthly mother. And on the seventh day sanctify your body for your heavenly heart. On the seventh day eat not any earthly food, but live only on the words of God and be all the day with the angels of the Lord in the kingdom of the heavenly Father. And on the seventh day let the angels of God build the kingdom of the heavens in your body, as you labor for six days in the kingdom of the earthly mother, and let not food trouble the work of the angels in your body throughout the seventh day, and God will give you long life upon earth, that you may have life everlasting in the kingdom of the heavens. For I tell you truly, if you see not diseases any more upon earth, you will live forever in the kingdom of the heavens. And God will send you each morning the angel of sunshine to wake you from sleep. Therefore obey your heavenly Father's summons and lie not idle in your beds. For the angels of God and water await you already without. And labor all day long with the angels of the earthly mother that you may come to know them and their works evermore and more well. But when the sun is set, and your heavenly Father sends you his most precious angel, sleep, then take your rest, and be all the night with the angel of sleep. And then will your heavenly Father send you his unknown angels, that they may be with you the live long night. And the heavenly Father's unknown angels will teach you many things concerning the kingdom of God. Even as the angels that you know of the earthly mother instruct you in the things of her kingdom. For I tell you truly, you will be every night the guest of the kingdom of your heavenly father if you do his commandments. And when you wake up in the morrow, you will feel in you the power of the unknown angels. And your heavenly father will send them to you every night that they may build your spirit. Even as every day the earthly mother sends you her angels that they may build your body. For I tell you truly, if in the daytime your earthly mother folds you in her arms, and in the night the heavenly father breathes his kiss upon you, then will the sons of men become the sons of God. Resist day and night the temptations of Satan. Wake not by night, neither sleep by day lest the angels of God depart from you. And take no delight in any drink, nor in any smoke from Satan, waking you by night and making you to sleep by day. 
For I tell you truly, all the drinks and smokes of Satan are abominations in the eyes of your God. Commit not whoredom by night or by day. For the whoremonger is like a tree whose sap runs out from its trunk. And that tree will be dried up before its time, nor will it ever bear fruit. Therefore, go not a whoring, lest Satan dry up your body and all the Lord make your seed unfruitful. Shun all that is too hot and too cold. For it is the will of your earthly mother that neither heat nor cold should harm your body. And let not your bodies become either hotter or colder than as God's angels warm or cool them. And if you do the commandments of the earthly mother, then as often as your body becomes too hot, will she send the angel of coolness to cool you. And as often as your body becomes too cold, will she send the angel of heat to warm you. Follow the example of all the angels of the Heavenly Father and of the Earthly Mother, who work day and night without ceasing upon the kingdoms of the heavens and of the earth. Therefore, receive also into yourselves the strongest of God's angels, the angel of deeds, and work all together upon the kingdom of God. Follow the example of the running water, the wind as it blows, the rising and setting of the sun the growing plants and trees, the beast as they run and gamble, the wane and waxing of the moon, the stars as they come and go again. All these do move and do perform their labors. For all which as life does move, and only that which is dead is still. And God is the God of the living, and Satan that of the dead. Serve, therefore, the living God, that the eternal movement of life may sustain you, and that you may escape the eternal stillness of death. Work, therefore, without ceasing to build the kingdom of God, lest you be cast into the kingdom of Satan. For eternal joy abounds in the living kingdom of God, but still sorrow darkens the kingdom of death of Satan. Be therefore true sons of your earthly mother and of your heavenly father, that you fall not as slaves of Satan. And your earthly mother and heavenly father will send you their angels to teach, to love, and to serve you. And their angels will write the commandments of God in your head, in your heart, and in your hands, that you may know, feel, and do. God's commandments and pray every day to your heavenly father and earthly mother that your soul become as perfect as your heavenly father's holy spirit is perfect and that your body become as perfect as the body of your earthly mother is perfect for if you understand feel and do the commandments and all for which you pray to your heavenly father and your earthly mother will be given you for the wisdom, the love, and the power of God are above all. After this manner, therefore pray to your heavenly father, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And after this manner, pray to your earthly mother, our mother, which art upon earth, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done in us, as it is in thee. As thou send every day, thy angels send them to us also. Forgive us our sins, as we atone all our sins against thee. 
And lead us not into sickness, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the earth, the body, and the health. Amen. And they all prayed together with Jesus to the heavenly father and to the earthly mother. And afterwards, Jesus spoke this to them. Even as your bodies have been reborn through the earthly mother's angels, may your spirit likewise be reborn through the angels of the heavenly father. Become therefore true sons of your father and of your mother and true brothers of the sons of men. So now you were at war with your father, with your mother, and with your brothers. And you have served Satan. From today, live at peace with your heavenly father, and with your earthly mother, and with your brothers, the sons of men. And fight only against Satan, lest he rob you of your peace. I give the peace of your earthly mother to your body and the peace of your heavenly father to your spirit and let the peace of both reign among the sons of men. Come to me, all that are weary and that suffer in strife and affliction for my peace will strengthen you and comfort you for my peace is exceeding full of joy. Wherefore do I always greet you after this manner? Peace be with you. Do you always therefore so greet one another that upon your body may descend the peace of your earthly mother and upon your spirit the peace of your heavenly father and then you will find peace among all yourselves for the kingdom of God is within you and now return to your brothers with whom hereto you were at war and give your peace to them also for happy are they that strive for peace for they will find the peace of God go and sin no more and give to everyone your peace even as I have given my peace unto you for my peace is of God, peace be with you. And he left them, and his peace descended upon them, and in their heart the angel of love, and in their head the wisdom of law, and in their hands the power of rebirth. They went forth among the sons of men to bring the light of peace to those that war in darkness and they parted wishing one to another peace be with you